Here we have our next rule and what we need to do is we need to state our implied domain and also state what the range is going to be. So we need to be able to look at this and just recognize immediately the type of graph that it is. So we can just by looking at this recognize that this is a rectangular hyperbola. So let's write that in. Now it's also important, hyperbola, that we can recognize the features that a rectangular hyperbola has. So what are the key features of this type of graph? Well, they are the fact that it has uh, asymptotes. So we need to figure out what the asymptotes are going to be. Remember the way in which you figure out the vertical asymptote is you take the denominator and you set it equal to zero and then you solve for x. So in this case, x would be equal to negative a half. Remember what this means. This means if I was to sub in negative a half into this, well, two times negative a half is uh, negative one, and then negative one plus one is zero, I get a zero in my denominator, which means this whole thing becomes undefined. It doesn't work. So this is telling me I can't sub in, oh, let's actually move this a bit to the right. I can't sub in an x value of a negative a half. It doesn't exist. So my graph does not exist here. That's the whole point of the domain. If I was to sub in negative a half into this, the whole thing would become undefined and it would just break down. So immediately, hopefully you can think about how this is going to relate to our domain. The other thing we have to consider is what our horizontal asymptote is going to be. Remember, this is where you just look at the number by itself. So this three means that the whole graph has been, been shifted up three spaces. So this is y is equal to three as my other asymptote. So nothing too complicated there. We come over here and we put this in. Remember, you always have to label your asymptotes with equations. So y is equal to three, x is equal to negative a half. That's very important. So those are our asymptotes right there. Let's now give this thing a sketch. Remember, we need to remember how these hyperbolas work. The fact that I've got a negative in front of it means that it's been reflected. So it's going to look like this. Remember, your graph should not be touching the asymptote. It should look like it's approaching it. So it's going to look like this. So because I've got a negative here, I've drawn it this way. If there wasn't a negative, I would have to draw it over here. Remember, like that. That's the standard way it looks. But because I've got a negative, I've drawn it so it's reflected. Okay, hopefully that was a good revision of how to do draw hyperbolas. But remember, the reason why we're here is we need to figure out what the implied domain is. So the domain isn't specified, but because we know how a rectangular hyperbola works, we know that it's going to be all real numbers excluding x is equal to negative a half here. So I write it like that. So it's all real numbers excluding x is equal to negative a half. Remember, if we were to sub negative a half into this, the whole thing would become undefined. So remember, the whole point of the implied or maximal domain is that the domain only exists where the graph makes sense for the rule. So when the, gra when the domain isn't specified, you need to think through where it would make sense. The range in this case is going to be very similar. It would be all real numbers excluding this three right here, wouldn't it? Because I can't sub in that three. So in terms of my possible y values, you can see by this asymptote, I can't have anything equaling to three. And that's how you do it. So that right there, I've identified my maximal domain and I've also stated what my range is going to be.